Yeah, we, uh, I've been here 21 years, this is my 21st year, and we uh, tried for 20-something plus years to get a parking lot that people wouldn't twist their ankles in, and praise God for that. And then at the year before, we had, this building is over 40 years old, and uh, we're the third church, I believe, that's in this facility. And the uh, roof was leaking, and, you know, so we now have two roofs. We have the original with a little bit of holes in it, and we have a really brand new roof over that. And so with all the activity that happens in the admin building, House of Mercy, that building gets so much activity, uh, we've set aside some of this money that we didn't spend on the paving, and we're going to renovate the uh, admin building. Actually, we're going to shut down the, the, the admin building in June. That's when our contractor comes in and going to put this non-destructive floor in there. And so, hey, you, uh, so give us grace with that one. We're trying, and then eventually we're going to overhaul the bathrooms in here. We'll do that. So just trying to be good stewards, uh, but yet staying focused on the fact, you know, we're not about all that ornate stuff, if you notice, um, but we are uh, really centered on helping out ministry overseas as well as locally here. Well, praise God, I want to welcome our live streaming audience, those that might be from another place, another country, another state. Welcome with us this morning. I'm going to tackle a subject here this morning that can be a little unnerving, so I'm going to put you right on notice this morning. If you don't have a handout, you're going to want to get one, or maybe Jim could bring some in. Uh, we, you need to look at that and uh, bring it home. Check out the Word. You know, this is that uh, truth I desire always, to seek after truth. And so we're going to see this morning what the Lord says about some of the things that are going on in our local area and across the United States that is, I think, very alarming, at least to me. Well, let's, uh, let's pray first. Lord, I thank you this morning for your word that is full of truth and power. Holy Spirit, you're welcome in this place. We ask that you would bring that revelation of teaching. James says, if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask the Lord. So we ask for wisdom around this, Lord. If I'm here not in any way, Lord, to discredit any business or uh, people that have been seeking after things that uh, may have been confusing or maybe even in their own ignorance, but I do ask that you'd shed a light on truth, that your people would not perish for a lack of knowledge. So I ask for your wisdom, your discernment, Lord, to be able to deliver this in love but in truth without compromise. So I thank you for your blessing and your covering, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. All right. Um, I've titled the message this morning, Uncovering Masquerading Spirits, and I've done a whole lot of research uh, the last couple of weeks since this came across my attention. First, let me ask you a question. What is the devil's primary strategy against God and his people? What's the devil's primary strategy? Deception. Lies and deceptions, right? It started right in the beginning. If you go to Genesis in chapter 3, right, where he, the devil approaches, it says he was more crafty or more subtle than all the creatures. And he, he approaches uh, Adam and Eve, and it says, the first question he asks is, did God say? And then he argues with the woman. The woman says, yeah, God said if we touch this. He goes, no, that's not true. So he undermines the goodness of God, lies about God, and says, no, God doesn't want you to know this so that your eyes won't be opened because if they're opened, if you have enlightenment, you'll be like God, right? That's what got Satan, Lucifer in trouble right in the beginning when he rebelled against God in the heavens. So the major deception there, you see that in Genesis 3.1, he does it also. What's the first thing when Jesus, now full of the Holy Ghost, after he's baptized in the Jordan... It says, now being led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness, the devil, he, he fasts for 40 days. The first thing the devil does, he comes to him. He's a dog. You know, he, he just does that. What do you do when you're hungry? Well, you would talk to somebody about food. <laughs> so what does the devil say to him? He says, if, if, if you're the son of God. What do you mean if? If you're the son of God, then change the stones to bread. Later, he says, he takes him up on the high place of the pinnacle and says, if you'll worship me, throw yourself down. And he twists the scriptures. So deception has always been one of the primary strategies the devil uses against us. He tries us to get us to understand things that are not true, or at least substitute what is true for a counterfeit. You know, if you dress up a pig 
and put on all the lipstick and jewelry and little perfume, it's still a pig, right? And so the devil tries to make all these pig analogies look pretty good, but they're not. They're still a pig. Let's, uh, let's turn with me, if you will. The first scripture I want to look at is what Paul told Timothy. Turn with me to 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 4. We're going to begin in verse 1. 1 Timothy 4 and 1. Reading out of the New Living Translations. Verse 1. Now, the Holy Spirit tells us clearly that in the last times, some will turn away from the true faith and they will follow deceptive spirits and teachings that come from demons. These people are hypocrites and liars, and their consciences are dead. They will say it's wrong to be married and wrong to eat certain foods. But God created those foods to be eaten with thanks by faithful people who know the truth. And since everything God created is good, we should not reject any of it, but receive it with thanks, for we know it was made acceptable by the word of God and prayer. Interesting scriptures here. It says, in the latter days, King James says it this way, now the Spirit speaks expressly in the latter times, some shall depart from faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, forbidding to marry. You know, I'm told now statistically there are more people living together than are now married. Sounds like that scripture's for real, right? And so... Paul warns his spiritual son, watch out, Timothy. Things will get really interesting towards the end. There's a couple of definitions here. Masquerade. Um, The definition of that, I've got it there, is pretending to be something or someone that you are not. Wearing a disguise. Divination. You're going to see this. In fact, it speaks of this deception. Any form of divination, it's an occult practice or witchcraft practice, it's attempting to gain or get insight by way of an occult or witchcraft practice or ritual. Those who go to mediums and psychics, read horoscopes and all, what is the source that is behind that spirit? Satan and witchcraft, right? And so anytime we substitute, if you try to get a gain or get insight, or get healing from, or some revelation from, a source that is not from God, you're in violation of the first commandment. Have no other gods before me. I'm a jealous God. If he produced all things, gave you life, made everything, gave his son, doesn't he have a right? (laughs) Why would you go after some counterfeit, imaginary darkness? It, It Really, when you step back from it, it's like, really, what is the purpose of that? Now, there are scriptural commands... The enemy always counterfeits what is good with evil. And the key then is the source that is behind it. Understanding the source that is behind anything is key to discerning what is true and what is not, and what is good and what is evil. One of the devil's uh, strategies, let me give you an example. Let's take this offensive thing, abortion. It's called a right to choose. A woman's right to choose. No, a woman has a right not to get pregnant. But once you are, you do not have a right to then turn to a deceptive spirit called murder, done by either fear or greed or all of the things that happen as a result of that child being born. It's murder, it's selfish, it's self centered, it's rooted in fear. Let's take another one. So if you look at what's behind the spirit of abortion, it's murder. It's dressed up as a pig called right choice. How about pain medication? Opioid addiction, it's all over the place. How many thousands of Americans die every week? I'm told 300 die of drug overdoses. I was talking to one of our EMTs this this Thursday, just using Narcan to survive. Happens on a regular basis. Well, in that case... Opioids were to relieve pain and suffering. I wonder, that masquerading spirit, which is now addiction, 
They come to reduce pain and to release that. And yet, how many people have died and how many families have gone through absolute living hell with someone who's struggled in that addiction? The very thing it was supposed to bring, relief from pain and suffering. Now it does in the right place. But then we find doctors who have overprescribed it. Now it's being laced with fentanyl. More death and pain has helped. And then you've got people that are profiting by it. How about the porn industry? What's the spirit behind the porn industry? It peddles pleasure and excitement. But it's really the spirit behind it is lust, adultery, seduction, sexual disease. That's the spirit that's behind it. Same with horror movies, those who make these slasher films. It's called entertainment. It's really rooted in the spirit of fear. And that breeds, if you watch those things, it will breed anxiety and fear. People checking their locks and wondering, I wonder if something's going to happen to me. Again, there's wisdom, but there's a spirit that's released in those who make those. So when we see masquerading spirits, there are many, and I listed a whole bunch of these commands. And by the way, there's a marquee down the road. It says, the commandments of God are not suggestions. I like that. It's not just like a good idea. No, God said. (laughs) Did God say? Yes, he said, yeah. Have no other gods before me, number one. Number two, I will tolerate, I will not tolerate your affection for other gods. Do not make idols for yourself. Be careful. Let's turn this one. Turn back to Deuteronomy 18. Deuteronomy 18, let's start in verse, well, we'll first start in verse 9. When you enter the land that this is given to the Israelites, they're about ready to go into the promise, right? When you enter this land that the Lord is going to give you, be very careful not to imitate the detestable customs of nations living there. For example, never sacrifice your son or daughter to burnt offerings. That's the modern day abortion. You passed them through the fire in the old days. Do not let your people practice fortune-telling, sorcery, interpret omens, engage in witchcraft, or cast spells, or function as mediums, or psychics, or call forth the spirits of the dead. Anyone who does these things is detestable to the Lord. And it is because these other nations have done these detestable things that the Lord God will drive them out ahead of you But you must be blameless before the Lord your God. The nations you're about to displace consult with sorcerers and fortune tellers, but the Lord your God forbids you to do such things. That's pretty straightforward, right? King James speaks of the um, don't use divination. This is that attempting to gain insight by way of some ritual or occult practice. You know, when we go overseas and we go into a village or we go downtown in in Argentina or Brazil and you see the white flag hanging over either a hut or outside of a a place of business in in almost every block in some of them, you'll find the Macumba or San La Muerte, the witch doctor. You go in there and you, in the village, you might trade a chicken. You bring your child in that's sick from some intestinal disorder. You, You pay the witch doctor that. He does some kind of incantation and your child is recovered from that but obtains demons in the midst and is worse off from before. It's the hook. The devil always has the hook, right? So be careful, he says. Don't go after these other things. Number four there, I listed all these scriptures. We're not going to go there. But these are other scriptures of the warnings that are there about this practice. We know that discerning spirits is a gift from the Holy Spirit. So let's turn to 1 Corinthians In chapter 12, we know in 1 Corinthians 12 about spiritual gifts. Paul is teaching the church at Corinth. It says, brothers and sisters, this is 1 Corinthians 12, 1. Now, regarding your question about special abilities, King James says your special gifts, I don't want you to be ignorant. You know that 
you were Gentiles, carried away by dumb idols, even as you were led. Wherefore, I give you an understanding that no man speaks by the Spirit except calls the, that calls out the Spirit of God, except calls Jesus accursed. New Living says it this way. I don't want you to misunderstand this. You know that when you were still pagans, you were led astray and swept along by worshiping speechless idols. I want you to know that no one speaking by the Spirit of God will curse Jesus. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit is the source of them all. There are different kinds of service, but we serve the same Lord. God works in different ways, but in the same God who does the work in all of us. And a spiritual gift is given to us so we can help each other. To the one person, he gives the ability of wise advice, another one, special knowledge, another one, great faith, another one, the Spirit gives healing. To the person to perform miracles, the ability to prophesy, he gives someone else the ability to discern whether a message is of the Spirit of God and another from the Spirit, another Spirit. Still another person, he gives the ability to speak in unknown languages, and with another, the ability to interpret them. It is one and only Spirit who distributes these gifts. He alone decides which gift each person should have. So one of the gifts that's listed here is the discerning of Spirit, the ability to know what's the Spirit behind this. And so we want to pray for that discernment. We want to have that revelation. We know that the Word provides truth. We know that prophetic words can have truth. We also know that there's a discerning that goes on. You ever get a check in your spirit? Something's going on. It's like, oh, just something doesn't seem right there. Pay attention to that. Um, we were sharing in Wednesday. Mom shared uh, communion Wednesday morning at intercession. And we've been looking at this scripture in Hebrews 5.14. It says, the mature believers have trained their senses to discern good and evil. Look at that scripture. You can look it up. Hebrews 5.14. It says, it's about time that you got off the milk bottle and you start eating meat and you become mature. And once you do that, you will pay attention to what's going on in your natural senses because that will pick up a discernment for what is good and what is evil. Pay attention to those things. And so that's one of the giftings that the Lord Holy Spirit who's in us, right? If you are born again and you have the Holy Spirit in you, then when you start to see something that is not of the truth, it'll start to get to manifest. I'm like, man, I don't know what that is, but it's not feeling good. Pay attention. That's the gifting that the Lord gives us. Okay, let's, um, let's look at another scripture, 1 John 4, 1. Turn all the way to the back. 1 John 4, 1. The senior apostle at this point, the only one still living, writes this to the fledgling church, probably at least second, maybe third generation church that's now coming up, and he says in 1 John 4, 1, Dear friends, do not believe everyone who claims to speak by the Spirit. You must test them to see if the Spirit they have comes from God. For there are many false prophets in the world. This is how we can know if they have the Spirit of God. If the person claiming to be a prophet acknowledges that Jesus came in a real body, that person has the Spirit of God. But if someone claims to be a prophet and does not acknowledge the truth about Jesus, that person is not from God. Such a person has the spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard is coming into the world and indeed is already here. You, don't belong, you belong to God, dear children, and you've already won your victory because the spirit who lives in you is greater than he that's in the world. Amen? So one of the ways you can find out when... It's kind of a go, no, go check. When I'm doing prayer ministry on people that come in, I said, do you know Jesus? Pray for me about Jesus, that he was born, given a body, son of God, crucified, resurrected on the third day, ascends and is coming back. When they can't speak that, sometimes I've had them just lock right down. They're like, okay, we're, you're not born again yet. You cannot profess that uh, unless you're born of the Spirit. And so... If, you know, it's kind of weird. You don't want to you know, be out and about. And, uh, but if you want to know if someone speaks by the Spirit of God, so what's the truth about Jesus? What do you know about the truth about Jesus? Hmm. Now, why is that relevant, Pastor? I'm glad you asked. 
turn the page. Now we're going to get into where the rubber meets some of the road here. Seeking healing or peace or revelation from any source that is not of Christ's basis violates the first commandment. The occult in the New Age is a counterfeit spirit, and behind that spirit is witchcraft. It's the honor of Satan. And it has power. I mean, we've been in places where strange things have happened, animals that are possessed, things that occur, people that come in. But I'm telling you, the power of Jesus, even though Satan has power, he does not have authority over a believer who stands in that authority. I've been in places where they've come to kill us. There's a testimony. Heidi was just in Florida. Um, I have an eyewitness account of one of our folks in Mozambique where the witch doctors were so upset with this little blonde five-foot-two lady running around causing all these conversions, 10,000-something churches and feeding all these orphans. So they decided to pray their incantations over a black mamba snake. She arrives in the, she's standing on a platform of a flatbed truck. She's preaching and she hears the Holy Spirit is, they're going to send something to bring harm. Don't be afraid. Something to that context. I don't have the exact, she shared this with me. At that point, a black mamba snake comes through the crowd. They don't even see it. And a black mamba snake, you get bit by that, it's over. And the people of Africa know how serious that snake is, right? Well, they all clear out, and here comes the little blonde lady with a two-by-four, jumps off the flatbed truck, and flattens that snake's head. It really impressed all the men that were there, like, whoa. As soon as that message went down, it was like, woo-hoo. Because they realized, one, she's not afraid. Well, so what's the point here? The devil's has power, but again, it's demonic, counterfeit power. When you see sorcery and mediums and psychics and those who are operating in this, they have power. It really discourages me when I drive down Oleander and I see all that. Psychic readings come here. This is our city. Well, let me tell you what happened. Then it just came upon us and I realized, what in the world? I want to talk to you about what happened in an event that occurred. We were, um, I was looking for something that I could give my wife as a gift. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, Lord. It didn't turn out the way I thought. So I decided, well, you know, she gets stressed. She has a lot of things that she does and takes care of me and all the kids. And So I said, I'm going to get her a massage. So I'm going to go down. I'm going to buy a gift certificate so she can get a nice long massage. So I go down. I'm not going to discredit any local establishments because I went to many on this, by the way. And uh, so I went there, and I said, hey, do you have gift cards for my wife to get a massage? Oh, yes, we have them. So here, and I got, I got the gift card, and they gave me the brochure of all the different uh, things you can have, facials and hair things, and all these different massages, 30, 90. And I, we started to look at it, and my wife drew my attention to it. First, my mother-in-law, who visits rarely, uh, she lives in Baltimore, she's 90 some. When she drove by this establishment years ago, she goes, oh, no, that's, that's counterfeit. And we just kind of forgot about that. And uh, here's what it says. Escape to a place where beauty and well-being converge. Our salon is devoted to restoring balance, therapeutic products of service based on pure flower and plant essences, rituals of renewal for your mind, body, skin, hair, so you become the peace that you seek. Start to smell something there. It goes on. Open it up. It says, the signature massages, massages start with a chakra sensory journey that will then focus on balancing your energy as well as addressing your physical and mental being. The power of touch, breath, aromology can be combined to create wellness that will give you mental and physical and an emotional break for your body. And it talks about different techniques. Well, those words started to leap out at me. I said, hmm. My wife drew my attention. I said, hmm. So then I started going online. What the heck is a chakra sensory journey? <laughs> you don't want to know, or maybe you should. Well, things I've been learning or looking at. So then I said, well, let me go to another establishment. So I walk into this other establishment, and I said, um, what do you have? Do you have massages and gift cards? Oh, yeah, we have all that. Two very nice young ladies at the front desk. 
I said, okay, um, well, suppose I wanted to get a chakra ma massage. Oh, well, we would call in a Reiki specialist that will then open that modality for you. So now I got another word, Reiki. We got yoga meditation. We have that available, but we need a Reiki specialist who is in who be, has been attuned and enlightened by a Reiki master. I'm like, okay, I got more than I know what to do with that, this one. So then I started researching Reiki, and then I got into kundalini spirits and goddesses, and I said, holy, what in the world? Do you see the masquerade? I just want a massage. <laughs> you're going to get a massage, but you're going to get a whole lot more. Then I started researching more, and there are, this Reiki has now infiltrated our hospitals as a form of healing, therapeutic touch. Sound like a counterfeit to the laying on of hands? Then I researched more, and I found out there are certain chiropractic practices that use chakra and kundalini for relieving stress. And people come in unaware. They've got a pain and an agony, readjust me, do this, do this. And you'll find out testimonies from Christians that found out they were being infiltrated by the occult practices without them being known. Now, I'm not trying to freak you out, but I want to show you some things that I have learned from this practice. The Kundalini spirit, the Reiki, and the chakras, what are those, Pastor? First of all, Reiki is a dangerous occult practice. That's R-E-I-K-I. I have it in your handout if you want to research it yourself. But it is definitely, there are now in the United States estimated to be 1.5 Reiki channelers in the U.S. Well, I'm sorry, 1.5 million. Thank you. 1.5 million channelers in the United States. The life force energy is guided by a higher level of intelligence and the Reiki practitioners depend on a spirit guide. The, ult the occultists believe that more than we are more than just a body. We have a physical body, and the invisible bodies are superimposed upon these invisible bodies superimposed on the physical body, and believe that there lies within the energy centers called chakra. Chakra means this whirling wheel in Sanskrit. It's actually an ancient Hebrew language started in the Hindu religion. The clairvoyance, these are the psychics. The clairvoyance see mystical powers spinning around the chakras, releasing psychic energy. The seven chakras that are identified both in the Hindu and the Buddhist faiths, you can look at this up. They start, the main chakra that starts at the base of the spine and runs up the, the spine to the crown of the head. The chakras act as conduits or conductors for what is called the kundalini or the serpent spirit. It is the coiled space at the base of the energy and through meditation we awaken the kundalini spirit to travel up the spine to the head. When the kundalini force reaches the head of a person, the person experiences a mystical current of self-realization, knowing himself or herself to be God. Does this sound like humanism? I am God. I am, I am the God. The six chakras go to higher levels of inner guidance, but in the seventh, there is a merging of the spirit and your spirit. Sounds like full possession to me, honestly. Reiki is a Japanese word, means universal life energy or God energy by placing hands on and channeling this life force. Here's a quote from a Reiki master. Quote, when I do Reiki, I become a channel through which this force, this juice from the universe, comes pouring out through my palms into the body of the person I am touching. Sometimes I do it lightly, sometimes I do it famished, sucking drafts that I get caught up as I'm giving it. And it both surrounds the two of us, my patient and the practitioner. Sounds like possession by the laying on of hands during a chanting event, which we have seen overseas. 
One obtains the power from a Reiki master. In order to get Reiki certified, you go to four attunement processes. In the attunement process, it's known generally, but it's held secretly. So when you sign up to become a Reiki specialist, you go to the first, it's all generally spoken of, and it doesn't get unveiled until you are in it when they're in the midst of laying on the attunement process. Sounds like much of the 33-degree Masonic when you get there and the higher degrees you go into. You ever research that or talk to people who've been in that, how dark that is as well. Reiki changes the way people view reality. They seek yoga. They feel guided. They combine the massage technique without even the person knowing it, spreading this radiance of universal energy. This modality that is controlled by the Reiki specialist. And then there's lots of literature. You can get a children's Reiki handbook, a guide for energy for your kids, guiding children through their first Reiki attunement. You can also have a pregnant woman bring your pregnancy to us, and we will then pray this attunement for you and your unborn child. Therapeutic touch. In fact, Dr. Dolores Krieger, professor of nursing in New York University, she performs these ceremonies, these attunements, and she realized this, one of her students, I realized something real was going on when this occurred. So let me give you some of the testimonies. Again, I'm, I'm, everybody okay? All right, I'm just sharing what I want us to understand. In this study of what is a chakra, what is kundalini spirit, what is reiki, I'm not going to name the names of these goddesses because I, I just don't like it, right? I'll just skip over that. The use of the kundalini as a name for this goddess, blank, um, Starts back, it starts, it's rooted in yoga, it's rooted, rooted in Buddhism, it's in, in Hinduism. And it says, as the yogi performs this process, physical effects of some people believing to be a sign that the kundalini spirit is awakening in them. However, there are also who contend there's some very dangerous or undesirable, quote, side effects of the kundalini awakening through the chakra process. The following are some of those signs, some of the problems with awakening the kundalini spirit. One, there's a bliss feeling of universal connectivity. No longer des desire, some have no longer a desire for certain cravings. Others have an unsatiable desire for other cravings. There's a voice change. Sounds like I've seen that before. A change in sex organs. I don't know what that means. I didn't... What does that mean? <laughs> I don't know. I'll just leave it there. But does that mean you get confused about identity? I don't know what that means. Change in breathing. Energy rushes of electricity. Involuntary jerks and tremors. Shivering events that happen. A crawling sensation, especially itchy tingling in the arms and the legs. Intense sweating or very cold. When you, all of a sudden you can spontaneously start to have these breathing mantras and the, the words that are spoken start to come out without you even trying. Visions or sounds associated with a particular chakra. Diminished control over your sexual desires. Emotional upheaval surfacing Unwanted suppressed feelings or thoughts, certain repressed emotions becoming dominant in the, in the conscious mind for even long periods of times. Headaches, migraines, pressure in the skull so that they desire another release by going to another awakening to hear a popping sound. It's almost like you get it and then you have to come back for more. Pains in different areas of the body, especially the back and the neck. Sensitivity to light. Trance-like and altered states of consciousness. Disrupted sleep patterns. Vegetar vegetarianism and veganism. Change in body odor. Wow. It doesn't say whether it's good or bad. It just says. I'm just reporting. There's a particular testimony. This was written by, in a journal on yoga by David Eastman. He narrates two experiences during the kundalini awakening ceremony that occurred. 
I can't say this word, what happened to this guy. It just happened, okay? <laughs> we'll move on with that one. In the Kundalini Awakening, this happened in Chicago at Lake Point Tower. The specialist was calling on those today's subject on meditation. And so as he started to speak, he said he could see that the Kundalini was starting to dance. And as he repeated the mantras, and this one man there started repeating the mantras, he, meant, he says, I mentally repeated the mantras, and I noticed my breathing was getting heavier. Suddenly, I felt an impact of a rising force of intensity within me. Tremendous that my body lifted up, and I fell flat in the aisle. As I lay there with my eyes closed, I could see a continuous fountain of dazzling white erupting within me. Brighter lights. I was experiencing the thought-free state of I am, realizing that I have always been and will always be eternal, the consciousness completely experiencing the pure I am. <sighs> anyway, the Kundalini is the figure of a coiled female serpent, the goddess of blank which is thought to be residing in the center of the spine. So I did some research on people that have been involved. Here's my point. If you'll turn back to your handout. Reiki healing is a dangerous occult practice. And I believe it's now infiltrated. In fact, I know that one of my spiritual dads, they are countering this occult healing with the demonstration and the validation of physical healing by the laying hand of, on by Christians. I shared with you maybe a couple of months ago, Dr. David Zaritsky is on the council of one of my spiritual dads, and they have assembled a group of validated doctors who are looking at the before and after of Christian healing where therapeutic touch by the occult is a counterfeit to the laying on of hands that we see in Scripture, right? These will be the signs of them that believe, Mark 16. They'll be able to lay hands on the sick and they'll recover, cast out demons in my name, handle deadly things without harm. So the enemy has counterfeited this, but we now have a group of leaders that are saying, wait a second, let's get the medical association to validate Christian healing." So that it becomes a counter to those occult practices. And we know there are more doctors today. They're coming through. They, they cannot um, disprove the fact that Christ does heal today. And I shared with you one. There were several I read. Actually, I have copies of them in my office. Read where these, this particular young boy had, had had a digestive issue. They had done surgery, disconnected his bowel, disconnected his stomach. He was on a feeding tube. And he went, and after 12 years, they laid hands on him. And he was healed. The doctor said, wait a second. <laughs> no. The, both of those avenues had closed up. They went in and they validated. We don't know why, but they're closed up. And you have perfect appetite and you hear. And you heal. And you can eat. And so there's no other explanation of that. He says, I came in for the laying on of hands. And they touched me and prayed in Christ's name for my healing. And that's what happened. So they scratch their head and they so so there is this place where where the enemy is tempted to come in. The Lord is raising up those who say, wait, no, it has to be validated. When you look at the what's happening, be careful. When you go to get a massage, know who's laying hands on you. You could ask them the question, so what do you know about Christ? What do you believe about Christ? That'd be a good go, no go right there. Right? Oh, well, I'm a Christian massager. Good. Let, let, let me test your Christianity, <laughs> right? Um, when you go to a, if you go for a chiropractic adjustment, know what the chiropractor believes, what's going on there. When you're nursing, they're now using therapeutic touch. Know the nurses that are here that are ministering. These are just, think of it as if you have a child and you want your child to be protected, blessed, and healed, we don't discredit these things, but we need to know with wisdom what they are and who's behind it. What's the spirit that is behind it? 
I've listed there the attunement process by the Reiki um, leader, the chakra that means the spinning balls of psychic energy. Look at number seven. My people perish for lack of knowledge because they rejected knowledge. Hosea 4.6. Now, probably most of us at some point, either by ignorance or maybe rebellion, we've, we've kind of messed up. I do, you know, I've done thousands of prayer ministries. I said, well, you ever been involved in any occult practices, pursued looking at Eastern religions? Have you ever read horoscopes? Uh, do you get intrigued by witchcraft? And have you ever been to a psychic or medium? And it's not uncommon for many people to say, yes, at some point I did it by, by ignorance. Those who have been most oppressed have deliberately gone into it. And I've shared some testimonies of families, fathers, mothers who have been involved in deep witchcraft that have an effect on their children. And so most of us have had some involvement or some contamination, if you like, from this. So what do we do about that, Pastor? That's great knowledge, but what do I do if I know that I've either opened it by direct rebellion or just by my own ignorance? What do we do? Repent. What does he tell us? 1 John 1, 9, I've listed it there. 1 John 1, 9 says, confess your sins to him. He's faithful to forgive you from all unrighteousness. Lord, I, you know, I, I haven't always honored you and I've had other gods. I've sought peace and comfort by some other things. That could be alcohol, drugs, sex, porn, massage, policy. it could be a whole lot of things. Whatever you're doing to replace the Prince of Peace, to find some level of peace, that's called sin. And so, not that there aren't legitimate ways to go exercise, watch a good movie, have a nice, those are all legitimate things. But there are illegitimate vices that the enemy uses to entice us and draw us in. And so, what do we do? We ask, Lord, that you would forgive us. Paul, Peter tells us there, the last scripture on that page, stay alert and watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone he may devour. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. I'm just going to call a couple of attentions. If you'd like more information, first you can go online, and, but, you know, again, be careful of what, what you're looking for. Um, this is a book that we use for our training of our ministry teams. It's Defeating Dark Angels by Charles Kraft. I spoke with him in California now years ago, and uh, I find that uh, this is a very good balanced book on all sorts of um, what I will call twists and turns of the enemy and the occult practices. It's, uh, it's been written quite a few years ago, and it's, if you look at it now, wow, there's a lot of things that have happened that he said was coming. And then my book on uh, def breaking free, we do this on Tuesdays. We do our best. We have people come in from all over doing inner healing sessions, people that have struggled with some form of torment or brokenness. We, you know, as, as our body of believers, we, we know that we need to be a hospital and we need to be an army. We need to be a worshiping temple. We need to be a family, right? And so these are the places where um, we want to help. So if you have a particular need, go ahead and call the office on Monday, and we'll set up with an inner healing session to, to kind of unpack some of this. But I want to take the last few minutes, and I just want to pray. When you open up something like this, this probably has been, wow, I wonder if I did that, or man, that's happened, or man, yeah, I did do that, and We want to ask the Lord. So let's just close our eyes and ask the Holy Spirit. I know he's been already revealing some things. Places where through ignorance or rebellion, we've opened doors that, Lord, you would like to shut closed, but you also want us to be free from any of the torment or residue some people call it being slimed, where the enemy projects these things. We get enticed or somehow brought into it or seduced into that. And we let the temporal pleasures 
take us into a place that gets darker and darker. Lord, I also ask that you would reveal any generational places where family members projected or spoke either curses or open doors. And so, Lord, we thank you right now. Lord, we want to be willing to repent. So we do what 1 John tells us. We confess our sin of rebellion, of pursuing things that were not of your kingdom. You told us to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and you would provide everything we need. So any place where we've pursued unrighteousness that was not of the kingdom, we ask that you'd forgive us. Now just say it loud enough for your own ear to hear it. If you have a particular, I confess my sin of So that your spirit man is communicating to your soul man. Your brain hears it. Make that a confession to him. James tells us if we humble ourselves and draw close to God, he will draw close to us. And then you can resist the devil and he would flee. So we humbly come before you this morning, Lord, recognizing that sometimes we get off the track of where we should go. We call that sin, Lord. We make no excuses for it, no compromise with it. But we want to be different. If we've watched movies that have been highlighted or somehow entertained us with witchcraft or darkness or immorality. Lord, we ask that you'd forgive us. And Lord, we choose to forgive those who may have opened any doors on us, parents, siblings, loved ones, teachers, any generational doors that were opened. It says that the sins of the father in Exodus 20, verse 5, will visit to the third and fourth generation. That's a visitation right from a rent open door. But you then said, I will bless to a thousand generations those who love me. So, Lord, we forgive our generational forefathers and foremothers for any sin, open doors, any practices of abuse, where they rent the covering that they were supposed to be over us and they weren't. We forgive them. We make no excuse for it, but we forgive them. Whether they're alive or not alive, we forgive them so that we come out of our cage. And now I take authority over every spirit of witchcraft and the occult of darkness, every practice Everything that has stolen the truth or lied and deceived, I bind the spirits of deception and lies and torments. Everything that is unclean, everything that was witnessed in here, headaches, pain, any place where the doors might have been opened by those who laid hands on us or projected on us, we now cancel the assignments by the blood and the authority of the power of Jesus Christ who lives and rules and reigns, who all of his children are under the covered blessing of the Most High God. The enemy cannot snatch us out of his hand. The Lord has us completely. As we said, even when I lost myself and we couldn't find me, you knew where I was and you pursued us. You're pursuing wisdom and knowledge. We desire, Lord, to be those who are full of wisdom and revelation and understanding. That in these days you're raising up a mature body of army believers who are not arrogant but they're not afraid. They operate in the love and the mercies of Christ, but we snatch people out of the flames of judgment as Jude said we should do. 
So I take authority now in Jesus' name that everyone in the hearing of my voice, whether it be camera or here, in the name of Jesus, I speak freedom. I come against every place of darkness in your life, that there will be a new revelation of both healing and promise and purpose and freedom and peace in the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would now release the fire of your revelation, that your people would know that they are loved. They are not ashamed of the gospel. They are free in Christ. Wherever they are, wherever they're dwelling, Lord, I ask you to show them the way out of any pit that they're in. By We bind every addiction, every spirit of pornography and drugs and violation, every adulterous spirit of confusion, chaos, sickness, in the name of Jesus, wherever the enemy has sown discord and destruction to come kill and steal, we're taking back the land now in Jesus' name. And Lord, we declare that you are good and there is none like you. You are the healer, you are the savior, you are the deliverer, you are our soon coming king. And we declare without being ashamed who you are. And we thank you, God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's stand. Everybody stand. I'm going to ask our, minute, our worship team if you just come and play. I just want to invite anyone here, one of our ministry team, you know who you are, you've been trained. Please come. I know many are on travel, but if you're here this morning and you just need a little more or you need specific healing over anything, please come. Don't leave here. Let's just close our eyes one more time. Lord, I pray now that you would release the level of peace in this room that they know because you said that perfect love expels all fear. There's no fear of failure, fear that God isn't good enough, fear that I didn't do it well enough, or you don't know how dark, I had someone recently so tormented, you don't know how dark I've fallen, he can't possibly forgive me. No, that's such a lie. If you're here and you're in pursuit, God, I thank you, cast out all fear and all anxiety, but Lord, I ask that you'd bring the spirit of wisdom and revelation to us. And we want to receive, have you receive all the glory that you deserve, Lord. So we thank you for your truth. Thank you that you wrote it down, that we might be able to know the truth that sets us free. Jesus the Christ, if you're here and you don't know Christ, come. Come and receive him. There is no way to battle darkness without Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and the power of the fire of the Holy Ghost. You're not strong enough in your own flesh. But through him, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And greater is he that's in you than he that's in this world. Amen. God bless you all. Have a great week. Don't forget, tomorrow night, men's group, Kingdom Men. And then Wednesday night, we'll be finishing up the book of Revelation. We're in chapter 19, 20, 21, and 22. God bless you all.